Hopefully he'll be sorted with uh, within a few uh, within an hour or so. Dan, don't you think it's good to see other people running around frantically instead of us this time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice guys, Mark. Is nice everybody. guys. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's racing now, and absolutely, yeah, his mistake, our game. <laughs> Forty minutes to go now to the start, and um, everyone's out here taking shape, deciding what uh, light wind sails to have up for the starting procedure. And uh, it's just Paul and I now on the boat. All the pre-race festivities are over and it's time to go to work. OK, 10 minute guns just gone. Absolutely no wind. Everyone's getting pushed around by their tenders. A uh, big fleet of uh, boats around trying to stay out of the waves, trying to get anything we can to get started. So, uh, job done. Some of the boats that we thought were a little bit of were going to be real rocket ships 
are proving that's not the case and we're actually overtaking one of the boats we thought would be uh, optimised for these positions, which is pretty good. The, I've lost the sunglasses already. That was my fault. Uh, we're just trying to check to see what it is this wind holds out or not. But yeah, the boat feels good, so here we go. Well, here we go. Woohoo! Leaving La Havre behind. Sitting on about uh, 12 knots, boat smoking, keel's canted right over. Alex is down below going for his first forecast on the boat from Lee. Happy days. Folks, as we truck along uh, down here towards Ushant, this is what's meant by stacking the boat. As you can see down on the leeward side of the boat, that's uh, one of the bunks there. And it's a pretty bare old space, like an empty old supermarket. Nothing there from bulkhead to bulkhead. And yet when you look across the windward side, you'll see that everything is stacked up, everything from food, flares, medical kits, personal clothing, uh, everything you can think of, everything that we can move, even the water, is all moved up to windward. So that's just so we can get a little bit more power out of the boat and keep it upright. Well, this morning here, uh, day two, uh, quite an interesting little night last night. Uh, the fleet is starting to sort itself out. We didn't know exactly where we'd be in that position. We knew we were gaining on some lights. We got to the boat that we thought was uh, the, the lead boat in our class last night, very close to a lighthouse. Then we saw some rocks that just didn't look right. We knew Alex was cutting it close with the navigation. Didn't know how close. Got him on deck, so it was one of those calls where much put doubt in someone's minds. Every now and then you trust the validity of a GPS. And we doused the big kite and made our way out back to where we knew safe water was under uh, Genoa and Mainsail, which wasn't fast, but it was safe. Um, it would be a terrible thing to finish this race so early on the rocks. Cost us a couple of miles or so. The guys in front uh, slipped away again. It was probably our uh, first night nerves, if, it, if nothing else. We did a few average uh, little sail manoeuvres just simply because we haven't done as many miles training on the boat as we like, and we're still learning the ropes as we go along. But nothing that really costs us that much uh, in time. We heard last night that we were first. We thought they got it wrong. 
We looked on the horizon this morning and there was the competitors sneakily sitting over the side. They hadn't had their nav lights on all night. Uh, so the boat is really lifting her little yellow skirts and she's looking uh, very smart. So I think we are sitting somewhere around first, although everyone's still in sight with each other, so it's very early days yet. 7 o'clock uh, Monday morning on the 5th of November. It's been an interesting second night at sea for, for us, certainly. Uh, going into the night, um, yesterday we blew out one of our downwind sails. We were sailing along, pushing uh, that particular sail to the upper wind limit, and all of a sudden it boom, split from top to bottom. And uh, the result was, the end result was that it ended up in the, uh, in, in the in the sea, and we lost it. So after that, we had to hoist up our biggest sail. And uh, we went into the night at uh, high speed, surfing up to nearly 20 knots at times, um, with the big downwind sail that we have, uh, pushing very, very hard. And uh, now we've clawed our way back into first place. Um, during the night, we went past one of our opposition, a boat called Saving, and we passed them doing about 17 knots, only two or three boat lengths uh, away from them. So this is in the middle of the Bay of Biscay, 100 miles from land, Racing, so it's incredible. Well, no, uh, here we are, just about the end of my uh, dog watch, just about to go down after a uh, long night last night. Flew out uh, our intermediate kite, pushing it pretty hard last night, pretty close to the other boats lost the whole thing overboard, so now we've gone to our wall of, wall of power, which is the sail we affectionately call the Wampa. We've had that up all night. It's a masthead kite off a much bigger, more powerful boat. We were a bit nervous putting it up in the wind conditions, seeing we'd just blown out our other kite. It meant that Alex and I wanted to stay up at hand steering the boat all night. You couldn't trust the autopilot. And so we had a night with a uh, pretty little sleep last night, but sooner or later you get uh, very tired and you, you don't want to just have it where you both just completely blank out so we've had to have it so we fared off a little bit which is good for course to come down to a waypoint given to us by our weather router and uh, we, we've been swapping first catnapping in the little suicide seat here at just about half an hour each just so you're on standby in case something goes uh, terribly wrong with the big kite we have managed to keep it under control it was pretty exciting sailing pretty hard on the old arm but uh, we made it through the night and we managed to claw our way back into first place, which is great. Day two, Kate's going to stare over there. Competition that way. Monty, we decided to um, change down from the uh, masthead spinnaker, which is a huge sail for downwind sailing. We decided to take it down for the night because we've got a lot of wind coming off Cap Finisterre. Got that down fine, but then we tried to put up the little small uh, downwind sail. We put it up and found there's a rip in it, so we had to drop it exceedingly quickly. Did that, spray and water all over the boat, the front of the boat diving into waves. Then we put up what we call a Code Zero, which is a, 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 a predominantly light wind sail, but also for reaching in windy stuff as well. And then it's on a furler and it furls up, and it opened it up halfway, and then the rope that controls the, the, the furler on the drum wrapped around itself and bar tight, and it was five foot out from the front of the boat. Oh man, Paul and I have had a Monty, but we finally got it sorted. We're smoking along now, doing about 15 knots, settled down, and uh, it's time for some Pringles, because we're just knackered. Okay. All right, so on the uh, third night out, we've just uh, done the big sail change, as I was just saying. We've uh, dropped from the masthead kite, which is just a bloody 
that wall of power that propels us to huge speeds is also a wall of power to try and get Whoa. down 20 knots, 21 knots. Woo! Boat, boat smoking. Okay, we've got the code zero up now. Our first option was for the little, uh, little kite, uh, called the Kingfisher kite after the last people that were sailing the boat. It's got a big rip at it about that high up, about that uh, big, about a third of the way up and halfway along the cord of this sail. It's sitting in through that hatch at the moment, so we're going to have to repair it. The sail's soaking wet, uh, so later tonight when we run the engines again to power up the batteries, we'll pull the kite through the hatch there, the torn bit, hang it up over here right next to the engine to try and get some heat into it and uh, try and dry it out, get it all nice and prepared. Then we'll put some sticky back onto it, and as soon as she's ready, she's back to work again. So. But at the moment, everything's going good with the code zero. coast of Portugal and it's pretty full on as you can see we've got about 35 knots of wind and uh, we're reaching under the code zero stay sail and one reef maximum boat speed so far was uh, in the early part of last night 28 and a half knots which believe you me is pretty full on for a sailboat whole, the whole boat's shaking and creaking and groaning and bam straight into the back of a wave as we overtake it and oh, the whole boat's underwater.
Tell me if the bow's going to stuff in, yeah? Because I'll have to hold on. Well, this is about as full on as it gets. Boat's pretty much at maximum, surfing up to 28 knots at times. And uh, this is what it's all about. At the moment, we've got a 40 mile lead on second place. We're out in front, pushing hard. We've got about another 10 hours of this until the wind moderates, so we're taking everything we can. Twenty-four knots of boat speed, Paul saying. What, the word extreme was definitely created for this. Whatever you're seeing through the camera, it's a lot more full on out here, I can assure you of that. They always say the camera lies, what I'll tell you now, it's big waves, big ass wind, and kick ass boat speed. in the morning of uh, the 7th of November. I've just had a full-on uh, watch up on deck, driving hard, and uh, it's now time to wake Paul up. Paul! Paul! Your watch, mate. Rock and roll, dude. How's it going, mate? How are you going? Yeah, good. Just uh, spent the last uh, three hours between 14 and 21 knots, so uh, wind strength uh, 25 to 30, and uh, pretty constant at that. Pretty warm. Yeah, yeah, it is. I've got a cup of tea on for you, mate. So this is what it's like, day in, day out for 20 days, <clears throat> three hours on, three hours off, each person, pushing the boat hard. So that little symbol on the ele electronic chart that you're looking at is, uh, represents our boat, and we're about uh, 160 miles off the coast of Lisbon or just south of it, and um, you can see another dot further southwest on the chart. That's uh, our, our weather waypoint. We've got to be there by tomorrow. Uh, and then further southwest there, you can see a group of islands marked. That's uh, Madeira and then the Canary Islands. So um, we are making our way down the rum line towards our end goal, which is obviously Salvador. Um, but this is the route that we take. And we'll be heading sort of uh, west southwest. Uh, yeah, yeah, at least, at least, yeah. And just one last thing: what what sort of wind field is our opposition in? Um, the, uh, do you want their uh, lat long? Um, I've just got an update. Second place is, um, is uh, 38 to 13 north, 13 to 29 west. I mean, are they likely to close the gap? Okay, here we are. It's the morning of the 7th. 
Uh, just going along, uh, Alex is inside getting a weather forecast, a weather update to see how we're going to approach this uh, low depression uh, that's situated in front of us, between us and where we want to go towards the Canaries. Overnight everything's been going alright, that rip in the uh, spinnaker opened up again so we've dropped this kite and we've gone to the little, little headsail. On board everything's going fine, just getting on with the daily chores. Somehow or other we're still managing to pull out quite a big lead on the opposition which is uh, very comforting. It's quite warm, I think uh, we're going to, almost to making that transitory stage where we go to shorts today. So all is well, apparently there's quite a buzz back home with how well the boat's doing. Still got three open 60s behind us and uh, one has managed to slip through and pull away as they should. But yeah, all is good. The sailing's been good. It's been very easy. Uh, we've got a, with the hole in our sail inventory, as far as not having the, the intermediate kite, we are having to, we're choosing to go on the lighter side of the sail plane and go the little kite rather than the big wampa, simply because we don't want to blow anything out this early in the day and we seem to still be making good enough ground on the opposition uh, with, the, with the sail plan we've got. Also enables us to catch some uh, sleep because we uh, didn't get much sleep for the first couple of days as we tried to earn that big lead. But it... Well, that was interesting. I was just talking to our weather router, and um, it looks like uh, we're going to be sailing into um... recording. Okay, mate. Thanks, Lee. Talk to you later. Bye. Well, basically, we've got a, um, a depression. <laughs> You haven't got a chance. <laughs> <coughs> okay, mate. All right, thanks, Lee. Bye now. <laughs> oh, man. This lead that we've been uh, pulling out s slowly is... Uh, it could, could all disappear in the next four, uh, three days. Just been talking to our weather router and... Um, there's a depression. <laughs> Fuck it. See what we're going through out here? <laughs> we're losing our marbles. All right, all right. Let's... Well, that was interesting. It looks like our lead that we've um, we've extended out for the, since <clears throat> since the start of the race, which is about now 78 miles. Could be uh, a lot. Could have a large proportion of that uh, chunk taken out of it by the, the opposition behind us. We're sailing down into uh, a dying weak depression to the south of us at about 35 degrees north, and we're currently at 36 degrees north. So we're not far away from it. And the, we've noticed the wind field now. Uh, the wind speed has started to uh, drop uh, the closer we get. The problem is. Um, we're kind of uh, messed up whatever route we take. There's generally three routes. There's an east route, straight through the middle, or a west. The straight through the middle route is we're going to see within 24 hours less than five knots of wind from directly behind, which is no good. And if we go too far to the west, apparently we're going to see headwinds, uh, light headwinds, which also isn't good. So what I think is going to happen here is all the boats, including the ones in front of us, which are the, the open 60s, the bigger boats, they're all going to go into this uh, dying depression and uh, stop or slow up significantly. And then the other boats, uh, us at the head of our fleet, plus the boats behind us, will eventually catch up and bunch up together. So boats are going to close away uh, and then come apart again. And uh, we'll see how much of our lead is uh, eaten up. Hopefully it'll be big enough to, uh, or hopefully our lead will be big enough to uh, sustain first place. What I was trying to say is we're sailing into a parking lot. So often lying here in your boat, you're dog tired. 
Or what you want to do is, is uh, get a good couple of hours sleep so you're nice and fine and fit for the, whatever adventures the night holds. And uh, the boat's just roaring along outside. And you simply can't, simply can't get to sleep. You're just laying here listening, listening, and you can't sleep. You're wondering what's going on. You open up, you ask if everything's going all right. You're looking at the numbers on the, uh, on the above the chart table and everything there. And yet, when you come down, or when you're up there, just before it's your turn to go and get some sleep, all that you're thinking of is when my head hits a pillow, I'm going out. And just lay here for two hours, just listening. And that's it. <laughs> All under control, L? Yep, pretty good. Yeah, right, sounds like it. It's so tempting to put up the masthead shoot, you know, but we're at the top of the wind range. We keep getting gusts of 27. And in these seas, it's uh, quite dangerous for the top of the mast, you know? So, considering we're sailing, we're meant to be sailing into lighter wind, I think, uh, we hold with the code zero for a while and uh, as soon as the wind field comes down to 15 knots steady, we bang up the Wampa and make as much south southing or southwesting as we can. There you go, there's uh, the seventh bed cam <laughs> coming to you live from my pillow. This is our small sail for sailing with the wind behind us when it's windy. It's called our Reaching Spinnaker. And uh, it was one of four that we had on the boat of different sizes. One of them we've already blown out and lost in the water back off uh, Ushant. And uh, this is another one that's got a, a rip about so long in, in the uh, middle of the sail. So we've had to drop it, hoist a different type of sail, and then now we're making the effort to repair this one. This is the second repair to the same area of this sail. We did one yesterday, but it hasn't worked, so we had to drop this quite quickly this morning when daylight broke, um, hopefully before it ripped. And now we're starting to affect a repair on this one for the second time. We're just wiping the salt off uh, this ripped part of the sail here, um, just so that we can stick the uh, adhesive material um, to the two broken halves like that, stick the material on top, and then hopefully that will affect the repair. But uh, I think the last time we did this, it was the sail had too much salt residue on it from the sea, and it didn't stick. So this is the last thing we need. We should really be out there driving the boat, and now we've got downtime, which is part of the course, everyone gets it. But uh, the real secret here in this race is to minimize your downtime and maximize being out there driving. So it's not good. Here we are, lunch on day seven. I'm uh, cooking and it's looking pretty average at the moment. Went for some of the old UV smashed potato, instant mash, can't go wrong. It's cooking here in Big Al's Kitchen. All right, now, uh, thank, uh, thankfully for us, Mr. Bennett had the consideration to buy us these ABC Plus multivitamin pills. Now, these have your 100% recommended daily allowance of such things as vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin C. Uh, it's got the antioxidant nutrients including beta carotene that's all great this is what l recommends this is l vitamin pills <laughs> look at these little buttes these are the go these are the go that's a alex bennett vitamin pill that contains a recommended lifetime allowance of such beautiful things as pig's ear horse intestine probably a bit of hoof and everything like that all contained in one nice easy to slide capsule now Actually, thanks for the thought, Mr. Bennett. I'll go with Elle's recommendations. Hitch your hands, eh? Look at that. Bob Girardi. <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming and dining at Elle's Kitchen and Fine Cuisine Boutique. <laughs> Rubs up. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like it. Come mate, I'm not hungry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. So, 
Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Dad, what are you doing, man? <laughs> you just wasted a, a load of good food. <laughs> good vitamins, Al. Good vitamins. Would you really eat that? <laughs> Didn't think so. Yeah. This is what you call lunch. <laughs> no, it's not all right. It's very far from being all right. In fact, you're taking a piss out of me. <laughs> the, only, the only good thing in this pile of shit is the sausage. The vitamin pill. It's covered in shit. <laughs> what do we call this little number, L? <laughs> Don't take the piss out of me for one day. What do we call it? <laughs> We call it, there's no way. You're <laughs> coming in that kitchen again. <laughs> this is what Monsieur Chef Larson calls baby poo with dog's dicks. <laughs> Dig in, hell. <laughs> this is the sort of stuff I used to have bloody fights with at school. Not this sort of stuff. I want to be eating on a transatlantic four-star cruise. <laughs> what do you mean that? That wasn't in the contract. <laughs> it's actually quite good. Look. <laughs> oh, good on you. Oh, cheers, mate. You can come again. You can dine again. <laughs> ah, bingo! Another vitamin pill! <laughs> Get the shit off it.